Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. So in this video, um, I'm gonna follow kind of the same train of thought as one of my recent videos where I talked about duplicates. But in this video specifically, I have Nick. What's your Instagram? Utah Knives and Gear. Utah Knives and Gear and your YouTube is? Yes, the same. The same. So Nick and I, we've been friends for a few years now. Uh, we both like shiny things. Uh, <laughs> and over the years, we've actually picked up a lot of things because of each other. He'd get something I'd like, I would pick it up. I'd get something he would like, and he would pick it up. So we thought it would be fun to do a video where we basically go through and um, show you guys all the stuff where we've essentially kind of duplicated or, you know, purchases have been influenced by one or the other. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll go through it. What do you want to start with? Uh, well, let's do paramilitary since that's... That's what's in front of the in camera? In frame, yes. Uh, okay. So, I, I picked up... Uh, well, I picked up my paramilitary because you guys kept bitching about needing a paramilitary for size comparison and a standard pair wouldn't do it, so I picked up one that uh, has flitanium scales down at Blade HQ and they had already, you know, installed the uh, the scales and everything, which was nice because I'm lazy. And why, why did you get yours? Uh, you brought it over to my house and I just had to have one. I love the black blade um, and the just stonewash. You, you can't hurt it. Mine is slightly different with this crosshatch pattern on it, and that, other than that, they're identical. Yeah, they didn't have the crosshatch when I was down there, and uh, I like the crosshatch better. It's it's nice. I like them. They're super smooth. They're fun to fun to mess with. It's a good user. Yeah, they are. You can't. Yeah, you can't really hurt the finish. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really carry mine because I have a lot of other <laughs> knives. That I, I don't. I don't carry mine either, but it's it's a good it's a good one to have. Yeah, well, mine's a little off-center. That's weird. Anyways, um, so I got it, you know, for the size comparisons, and it's it's really nice. I've carried it a couple times, but um, anyways, it's so I picked mine up. He picked his up afterwards because he liked mine, and so that's that's the first duplicate. Yep. Uh, let's move on to what should we do next? Uh, ZTs. Okay, ZTs. So here is the. Uh, this was a pre-production run. This is the ZT0055, the Singovich collaboration, the first one with the uh, SLT system, and it's your first CT, right? This was my first ZT, yeah. Oh. I, I I heard of this, and then I had to have it, pre-ordered it, but ended up another company found it first, so I canceled my pre-order and just bought it straight from the other company. But That happens a lot. Yes. Yeah. Pre-orders. I had to have it faster than the other people. So nice. But I did, love it. They're awesome. Did you handle mine first, or did you pre-order before pre you handled mine? Pre-order before you, before I handled yours. Okay. I I heard of the concept, and I just had to have one. Yeah. And so mine was the pre-production, and then Nick's is the full production. So here is the difference in the blade grind. Um, just slightly more angled, mm -hmm. and yours is more straight. Yeah. So ZT actually picked up a four-axis CNC machine. Um, and the first thing they did is they um, that they wanted to do was do the blade more in line with um, you know Gus's customs. Uh, for some reason, they couldn't do it on their current CNC machines as they did with this one. So, with the new machine, they could grind the blades the way that they wanted to. So that is one difference. Then the other difference is um, actually the flipper tab. So I don't know if we're going to be able to see here, but the flipper tab here on Nix the production is actually slightly smaller. Um, than on mine, so uh, it's going to be so it's hard to see. Super, it's, it's very small difference. Yeah, minute difference. I mean, kind of a caliper, pull it out and, yeah. and measure it difference. But um, actually, well, maybe you'll see that here. Anyway, so that was one of the other differences, and then you know, of course, the internals, um, possibly the cutout here would everything would be scaled to fit the smaller flipper tab a little bit differently. But those were the two differences. Um, so, you know, with the new equipment, and then Nick put a polished edge on this one on his Wicked Edge. Um, but yeah, another duplicate that we have. Uh, I love mine. Yeah, it's amazing. It's super fun to flip. Yeah, and his is smoother than mine because he has flipped it more. Um, My wife hates it. <laughs> the, the angry wife. Sit knife. on the couch and flip a knife. She'll, she'll they'll snap eventually. Yeah. All right, so that's the ZT. Uh, well, let's continue in the ZT theme. So the 0010... TI now discontinued unfortunately because it's a damn good pen. Amazing. It's probably 90% of my pen carry is with one of these. Yeah. I have two. 
I, again, I would happily pick up a third if I found it for the right price. Yeah, I found mine for a hundred and I had to buy it. I should have bought two. Yeah, because that was pretty much half price. Yeah, I, one of mine I paid for like one fifty, and yeah. um, I, I still feel pretty okay with that price. Yeah, they're they're amazing. Very well made. Everyone tries to unscrew this, so they unscrew the system, but it's a great pen, and they're so tough. Uh, Husted coconut and broke o broke open a co coconut with mine. On your honeymoon? On my honeymoon, so. Why were you busy playing with coconuts on your honeymoon? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we needed a break. You need, oh, okay, that's good. You got but, thirsty. Coconuts yeah. are hydrating. <laughs> coconut <Electrolytes>. water? Yeah, <laughs> electrolytes, so. But they're amazing pens. The pocket clip's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite thing is a, a good pocket clip is hard to find on pens. It holds, it holds really good, but it doesn't tear things apart. I, I love that pen. It's awesome. I wish they'd bring it back. Every, and it's fun to hand people because they'll start to write with the uh, tungsten tip there and just mess their paper up. Yeah. Just, you know what's cool <laughs> is uh, it pretty much matches your yeah, your patina finish on your Boss 35. While we're there. Yeah, while we're there. Um, yeah, yours matches perfectly. Mine, They're close, but no cigar. Yeah. I love the these patina are, finish. These are awesome lights. Uh, like Austin said in his previous video about this light. I love the red. I use it all the time uh, when I'm wandering wandering around the house if I had to go find some. Doesn't mess with my vision. So did you have yours at, at the G at the gathering in Vegas G eight? Got it right at maybe a month after that. Okay. Because I thought I handled it at a show and the only show we went to together was G eight. Um, maybe it wasn't maybe it was at your house or something, but um, Nick had his, I went and I handled it, and I was like, man, that's a damn good light, and I really like the the primary red feature that um, you can turn on at night, because I use it a lot, too. And again, when you look at the price compared to other, you know, custom flashlights, it, it's pretty much half the price. Oh, yeah, And absolutely. it has a better emitter, too. Yeah, they're, they're, it's like, wow, 1,400 lumens on high. Is it? I think it's 1,400. 12? It? Could be twelve hundred. It's a ridiculous like and more than you need. I never use full power because it's way too much. But it's hard to see. But uh, it does glow. It's hard to see into this light. But oh yeah, it's got the glow ring. In it'll there, glow, which is cool. Yeah. So if you need to find it after using it real quickly, it's easy. Pocket clips really good too. Yeah, simple, but it works great. You can put those really expensive steel flame pocket clips on there, which I'm tempted to do, but. <laughs> The I mean, same price as the light, pretty much. Yeah, depending on which one you get, it can be. But anyways, um, and I like that it's aluminum because the weight is very reasonable for yeah. the size. And then the machining is really cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, um, so. They put really high quality internals in them. The machining's really nice. On oh, the threads and such. Yeah, it's super smooth. And Nick's a machinist, so he would know what good machining looks like. I know that's funny because you don't undo it very often, but it's it's nice to have... Nice smooth threads. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. And uh, I do like the it, undercuts here. Yeah. Well, I like that it can tail stand. Yeah. So, like, I'll keep this by my bed. My wife will be wandering in at night. She'll be like, turn on your flashlight. I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah, and it'll light the whole room up. Yeah, even on the low setting. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I, I mean, I use this daily, honestly. Oh, um, absolutely, yeah. Although the patina finish here is, I like it better than the satin. It's just such a nice finish. I just throw this in my bag. I don't even worry about it. Yeah, you had it in there with your keys or something? Yeah, just, it'll add to it. Yeah. It's, and it's just better than a satin or anything like that. Yeah, so he, he definitely made me buy that one. Uh, and I have two of those now. <laughs> um, let's do these. We'll, we'll pull out the uh, Clyde Chalinor. Uh, oh, let me move. And this is the Raptor 2 Reverse Tonto. So I got mine... Man, I, I probably had one of the first ones. Um, yeah, it probably was one of the first ones he ever made. Um, but it, Clyde does really, really good work. Uh, the machine work on him, the hand grinding, the fitment, the action, the smoothness, everything really is top notch. The design is beautiful. Oh, yeah. I, I love the design. Yeah, and it, it's a it's a big knife, but it handles very, very well. It's incredibly comfortable. Yeah, I think, what is it, three and three quarter? Inch blade. Yeah, yeah, three. In well, no, it's four. Four inch blade. Yeah, it's a four inch blade. But it doesn't. I don't know. It carries really well. Yeah. So I had mine. Uh, Nick asked me to buy it several times. Oh yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I told him no several <laughs> times. Um, and so one of our mutual friends um, put his up for sale, and, and Nick was like, uh, "Yeah, that's mine." Yeah, I. We were actually driving down to uh, 
Vegas last year, and Austin had this, and I instantly fell in love with it, but couldn't couldn't take it off his hands. So nope. luckily, I found someone that had one. Yeah, I'm still not going to sell it. <laughs> so, and I I do like his Dama steel. It's, and, yeah, it's beautiful. And the carbon fiber. I'm, I love mine, but I really like his too. I mean, I would happily take his off his hands, but he can't have mine. <laughs> so, uh, that's yeah, that one is is definitely. Trying to move crap out of frame here. Uh, that one's definitely one that uh, he picked up because of me. So that's the Clyde Chaloner Raptor 2. Um, so, yeah, we'll do this one. So I've shown you guys these in several videos. Um, but the Steelcraft Bodega, you know, at first I was like, you know what? Uh, a little bit expensive for a production knife. And uh, Nick's had that one for a long time. And, you know, people said good things about the bodegas a lot, and I just wasn't really sure. And then I, I handled Nick's probably four or five times. I mean, every time I see him and I'm over at his house or something, I'll, I'll definitely pick that one up. And so decided to give the Steelcraft line a shot because I like that one so much, and now I have two Steelcraft because yeah, I like it so much. They're amazing. Yeah. I love the satin and black. Yeah, that's this a nice This one's really pretty, too. The, uh, the satin and blue would be a really nice combo, too. Yeah. Yeah. But... They're, I love them. They're they're great knives and they're super comfortable. Oh yeah, they don't. I don't know. They. It's funny. It's a big knife, but it just doesn't. It doesn't carry that way. The thinness. Um, everything's rounded. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of work in these knives. And the geom, like just all of it. He spent a lot of time making sure that it's a comfortable knife, and the actions are amazing. Mm -hmm. Even the steel craft. We did a a previous video on comparing a little more in detail and. Yeah, you guys can check out that video. That was the only other video we've done together so far, right? Yeah. Okay. So anyways, um, I bought two of these because of his one. So, uh, yeah, that's his fault. Um, but, well, let's continue on with the uh, bag stuff. So yeah. this is one. So we'll put mine on the bottom here. But this is the uh, Todd Bag Steelcraft um, glimpse that was done by We Knives. And we're actually going to... We're going to do film a video on these specifically, probably here in a little bit. But um, they had these a blade show. I knew I wanted one, and Nick knew he wanted one, so I went to um, the Todd Bag table as soon as the show opened, and I bought two. <laughs> and uh, they're really nice. They're amazing. The actions are unreal. Yeah. Yeah, so we, I mean, I bought these for both of us, essentially. They were bought at the same time. We both knew we wanted one, and uh, yep. we're both very impressed. Yeah, it's... For for how much these are three hundred fifty bucks, uh, that's what they're gonna come in at, right? Yeah, they were three fifty. Mm -hmm. It's you get a lot of knife. Everything is perfectly machined. The uh, difference here, or the uh, transition, transition here, is perfect. There's not a flaw here, and the action is just unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's shiro smooth. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's shiro -Gorov smooth. So. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we bought these together, but uh, definitely duplicates um, that we picked up at the show. So yep. we'll do a video on these in a little bit. And, bum, ba -dum, uh, oh, yeah, let's, save, let's save those for, well. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do those last. Okay, next one. Um, so Shane Atwood, um, one of my favorite custom makers, and he's here in Utah. And Nick and I actually met him together. Uh, we were at Ryan Weeks' house. Ryan Weeks is a... a Primarily a fixed blade maker here in Utah does really nice work, but Shane actually drove all the way down from the sticks of Utah, <laughs> and we both got to meet him, and we both got to handle a, a knife he was building for Justin Laffer, which, was it, was it an atomic or a hot rod or something? I'm not sure. Yeah. I, sometimes I get them mixed up. Anyways, um, we both handled the same prototype. Uh, we both met uh, Shane, super nice guy, um, and his work is very very good no it's amazing yeah it's it's amazing work so um this is an atomic right yes yeah and then small, i think yeah this is like a medium size this is a large obviously this one's like full dress i mean this was an auction piece that nick took down for a tidy <laughs> sum of money it was a, it was a it tidy was a bit, sum yeah it was a tidy but sum. austin had showed me the bill i i wasn't really paying attention or missed some of the posts oh that's right oh i did I and did he you. showed me the work in progress pics and as soon as I saw the blade, that's that's the first picture I saw. I had to have it. So uh, Alcatraz backspacer is what he calls it. Yeah, that one's got a zirconium 
It's like a zirconium and then stainless steel rods for that one, right? Uh, damascus steel. Oh, is that damascus steel on the backspacer? <laughs> oh, oh, I missed that detail. That's nice. Um, and then uh, black Timascus scales. That's and good stuff. All damascus steel everywhere else, but yeah. Yeah, if his wife watches this, uh, definitely my fault. He didn't even know what was going on. I'm like, dude, have you seen the auction piece he's doing? He's like, what auction piece? And I sent him pictures, and, well, he took it down. Yeah, we were we were enjoying our Park City, and I was having a panic attack trying to keep up with that <laughs> auction. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I have three pieces from Shane. Nick has one. He's tried to talk me into selling him another one of my pieces, but I, uh, nope. Yeah. I don't sell you anything you want, do he, I? No. <laughs> Shane's work is just awesome. Yeah. What is this? What does he call this? Damascus. Oh, it was this. It was a, a Chad Nichols of some sort. Um, I don't remember which one it was. This one's on bearings, though, right? This one is not. Oh, it's on washers. Yeah. This one's on washers too. Uh, this was his first zirconium build. Um, this little one. Uh, I just picked this one up from another collector recently, so um, it's nice. Yeah, and it's cool to cool to have pieces from local makers. Oh yeah, and then along the same lines. Um, also from Shane Atwood, we almost have a uh, little matching, uh, what are these, knife pouches or whatnot. Yeah. So this one's done in shark skin, this one's done in hippo. Mm -hmm. um, his leather work is really freaking good. And it's he does some cool stuff where it's uh, he does kangaroo liners and stitching, and kangaroo is super, super tough stuff too. But I've always loved shark skin, so I'm glad Austin got that. And then I've never had hippo. But you have a shark skin one as well, right? The what? one that the one that came with the my knife is a blue ostrich. Oh, it's ostrich. Yeah. So he works with ostrich, hippo, shark skin, bison. I mean, he All does sorts. Of, he and does, he's his, so good at it too. Yeah, he, he's kind of a, a jack of all trades. But his leather work is, I mean, equally as good as his custom knives. So, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, what else can we get him to make us? Yeah, really. <laughs> he does some cool stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, another thing. So Afin Mir leather. Um, is his name Mike? I can't remember right now. Yeah, Mike. Mike yeah, Mike. 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 So Mike at Offie and Mirror Leather, he does uh, really good work. Um, I had one of the original gun decks, and then Nick got a gun deck. Yep. Um, and then this is a, a notebook slash wallet thing that yeah. you got. Sometimes I carry it if I know I'm, I'm going to be writing stuff down. So uh, it's just a has a pen or a pen slot here, cards, cash in the back here, uh, and then a notebook. So. Yeah. Anyways, he does really... Did you handle my gun deck first? Yes. So yeah. Nick handled my gun deck, he got his gun deck, and then I got the Nimitz here, which is a larger version of the gun deck, and then he got this, and then you've got a bunch of other stuff too from him, right? Yeah. I he have, made you a bag? Yeah, I've got a messenger bag, and then uh, he's... I've had him do a lot for my dad, like custom passport holders and a, uh, another gun deck as well out of Horween leather. Oh, nice. <clears throat> nice. With yeah, the stamps. He, he does really good work. He's... Yeah. And it's one piece. Well, yours is not one piece. It's two pieces. But normally his gun decks and what he tries to do on most of his stuff is as few pieces as possible. Yeah. And usually one piece. The normal gun deck is one piece. So yeah. It, it's a cool concept. It is. He's a nice guy. Unbelievably nice. Great communication and uh, customer good. service is amazing. Yeah. He does. He does really good work, and he's an active sailor, which is cool. He is. He moves around, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has to, he, his shop. He's like, oh, I'm in Hawaii now. Yeah. Oh, he, now I'm in San Diego. <laughs> So. But follow him. He does a lot of cool work in progress um, Instagram stories, and it's fun to watch. So. Yeah, you could probably watch him build your wallet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is fun. Yeah. So, All right, and then last but not least, um, <clears throat> so uh, this one, man, this is, uh, this is one that hurt Nick. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> so this is one that hurt, but uh, this is Craig Brown of Brown Knives, and um, his first knife out of the gate was a full integral. And so he, um, this was one of the first ones he made. I think this was, well, first he, I had number one. So I had the first knife that he made. And then basically he, you know, he remade me a knife and this was number like four or five. I don't know. Anyway, so I've, I've had this one. Nick, being a machinist, he really liked all the work that, you know, went into making this into the integral construction and a lot of the details. And so he got on the books for a, um, a full integral but done in carbon fiber and about a year later it was finished <laughs> yeah a year later he only made i think three no five he made five i think he made two he made three but one was kind of 
Okay. okay. So, so there's only yeah, there's only three, three carbon those. fiber integrals total, and then the total number of parabolic builds I think is 31. It's not many, yeah. It's I, very it's, yours is the last one, right? Mine's fresh off the press. <laughs> yeah, and yours is number 31. Mine's 31, yep. Yeah. So this might be the last parabolic he makes. Um, I think so. There I might be another one or two. I haven't seen a work in progress since. Yeah, but he's not going to get into. He's definitely not going into 40 as far as the number of par parabolics built. Yeah. So I mean, these are two of. 31 essentially yeah it's rare to get two together yeah so yeah. it's kind of cool to do one yeah and his his build was fairly expensive yeah i asked for a lot but the, the one thing he did it was really cool is the pattern um transitions it's the same piece of steel and the pattern transitions through all the pieces you know as if it was just cut and laid and yeah. uh that was one of the things that nick was kind of anal about and that made craig suffer <laughs> greatly yeah i pretty much wanted it cut out of the bar stock as you see it right there so all everything lines up the pattern lines up throughout really nice detail probably took up a lot more damage still than he wanted but oh yeah yeah <laughs> really really, yeah. really nice detail though i mean it's i'm glad you did that yeah it looks really really good i love the back um, well, it doesn't have a backspacer, but I love the, the back of the knife. The pattern, the, the carbon fiber is really cool. Yeah. I had one of the other um, carbon oh, fibers right. on loan. With you you handled that one. C-Tech? Blue C-Tech inlays? Yeah. Maybe. I have a video if you guys want to look back there, but I had one of the other carbon fibers on loan that I think Craig let me borrow. And um, you handled that one, and I think that's when you decided to go carbon fiber instead of titanium right or was it uh, at that point i had i had had my order in for a long time okay but that just solidified my choice okay yeah uh and then i waited a lot longer because i knew he was getting um a machine that i actually run so i'm like hold off i want you to machine that on on the new vf2 that he got so for those of you who don't speak machinist uh craig went out craig brown went out and got a nicer better cnc machine that could do more precise work and uh you know, not that you're going to see any no. problems here, he's, but... He spent a lot of time making this just right. But when you're a machinist and you're kind of anal like Nick here, you're like, hey, I want you to use a nicer machine that has better tolerances. <laughs> and so uh, Nick waited a while for him to get that machine. and Yeah, about um, four months longer than I was. Normally. Yeah, but, I mean, he killed it. He did, and he did a great job. And those are press fit, right? I think they're press fit with maybe a little adhesive. Okay, yeah. It's cool, though. It's he does a, some excellent work. I don't know what he does. I... I think I've seen this apart, but I got thinking about the uh, stop pin. I think there's a through hole here, because how do you get a stop pin in? Uh, he told me. So I think there's a through a hole right here under this plate You know, I'm, I'm to be able to put it in. But I don't know. It's fun to look at, because to machine e any integral is not easy. So Yeah, and it's it's a hidden pivot on the show side, which is cool. Yep. On, on mine, oh, it's on bold. Oh, on yours, it's bold. That's, yeah. I totally forgot about that. That's... Makes mine more special than yours. And his and Austin's is starting to get some awesome patina yeah. on the copper, so that's really cool. Yeah. I uh, love a natural patina. I hate forced patinas. Yours that has a sound. good sound. It, that, it reverberates the, through the tie. Yeah, the tie the tie really uh, lets it sail. But yeah, that awesome one, nice. it deadens the sound, so when you go full mall ninja, no one will hear you coming. Yeah, exactly. They're they're similarly weighted because I have so much damage steel. Do you know what he did though that was really good is he actually balanced the weight correctly on yours because when you told me you were gonna do full damage steel inlays with full damage steel, I'm like, man, how's he gonna? It's gonna be like That's handle I was, heavy. I was super worried. As soon as I grabbed it though, I'm like, all right, cool. He did something and it made it made it work. Yeah, I mean he, you know, but that was my concern. But of course, you know, Craig being <laughs> Craig. Uh, Perfectionist. An another easier. another anal aero engineer, aerospace. Yep. Aerospace engineer. He uh, he did a really good job. And but yeah, Austin got me hooked. As soon as I saw this, we were just having a, a dinner together, and he pulls this out. Well, like, not together. Our wives were there. Oh yeah, wives were there. Don't worry. Uh, double despite, date. Double despite date. what you wanted. But as soon as I as soon as I handled this, I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta have one. So. Yeah. And he omitted the uh, blade cut out here. Um, which was a good choice because yeah. you don't want to ruin that all that work that went into lining those up. Yeah, it seems to flow better. I originally wanted this, but it looks... It, I don't know. This is the Epic Snuggle Bunny D-shaped hole. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I, that, when I asked for, the, for that hole, I'm like, I want the hole that Epic Snuggle Bunny has. <laughs> oh. No! Oh. No! Oh. Take that back! <laughs> but yeah, 
Um, he's got a new one coming out too that should be pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. So, anyways, when you live next to another gear enthusiast, <laughs> um, you, you probably pick up some things in common as well. So if you guys live next to a gear enthusiast, make a list of all the crap that you guys have bought because of each other. Yep. Um, do you listen to the new podcast with... Um, what is it? Whiskey, pickle, Jake, and Levon. I have Metal not. Levon. So not. they live next to each other, and they have a lot of crap the same too. Oh, really? Yeah. They they try to go, and they're like, "Oh, look what I got!" And he's like, "Oh, I got that too." <laughs> and so they can't really like. It's it, you know. I mean, it just kind of happens. You start playing with certain toys, and it's like, oh my gosh, I love that. I gotta have that. This was something cool too, kind of off the. But when it opened, this this oh. is a perfect transition. Oh. Same with yours, but I didn't notice it until, you know, I obviously had one of my own, and I could sit and look at it a lot, but... Oh, yeah, that is... That he is matches some, uh, it up perfect. That is some anal detail right there. Yeah. I mean, you got to love those engineers for something, right? <laughs> so, anyways, but yeah, he's he's got... Um, he does some good stuff. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does next. And the good thing is, is that he finds ma knife making more interesting than work now. Yeah. Which So he spends more time <laughs> and energy on the knives than he does at work. Yep. And I think with the new machine, he's able to make the same quality, but slightly faster, so... Yeah. That's nice. Or probably better quality, too. Maybe slightly, yeah. I think he said it holds tolerances better, because his old one, he converted. Yeah, it, uh, those VF2s are great little machines. They are they have the higher RPMs for whatever he needs to do. Probably this carbon fiber. Oh, yeah, he said the carbon fiber was a pain in the A on the old yeah, machine. Yeah, he hated it. Yeah, he did. He probably hates me, but <laughs> <laughs> I want sure. this made this way. Yeah, I'm knife sure maker. <laughs> nice. But yeah, right. lots of duplicates because we obviously for a reason we love them. So yeah, yeah. So all right. So that's the end of this video. Um, we'll we have some other videos that we actually need to film now. So we will leave it there. Thanks for tuning in, guys. You can follow me as Epic Snuggle Bunny on Instagram, and you're already watching my YouTube. But you can also follow Nick as. Utah Knives and Gear. On Instagram and YouTube. Yes. All right, yep. see you guys.